All right. Well, stop me if you heard this before. Government officials and big pharma are coming together to hold a big summit to warn us all about the coming pandemic. Sound familiar? Yes, it's happening all over again. And we've been covering this story for months here on this show. So this is not a surprise to us at all. Maybe it is to some of you watching for the first time. BARDA just granted $176 million to Moderna to accelerate their development of a bird flu vaccine an emergency bird flu vaccine. Now, you'll recall Moderna never had a successful product ever come to market, ever, in the history of their company. The only time one of their products ever made it to market is because they got to sidestep trials on humans, basically, and use emergency use authorization during the pandemic and get us a COVID vaccine. And again, it's worth reporting that the current bird flu we have now is not contagious from human to human, very rarely, right? Also, we have treatments. So what they're saying is that they are developing a vaccine in case it mutates. Well, how do they know what it's going to mutate to? It's their best Wait, guess. This, this sounds like sounds a playbook right out of the uh, the last thing we would dealt with. Yeah, huh. seems familiar, right? I okay, mean, and so this is not what a cons- are they doing? This is not a conspiracy theory at all. I mean, they're literally doing it again using emergency use, use authorization to push us a bird flu vaccine. As we, as we reported before, the U.S. and European Union are also using emergency orders to order bird flu vaccines from the vaccine manufacturer CSL Securus, which is funded and advised, of course, by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm-hmm. And they're about to hold a massive bird flu summit in Washington, D.C. to plan how they're going to carry out this plan. We'll get to that part of the story in a second. But first, these are the same clowns that locked us up and told us to panic about COVID and preparing disease X right now in the next round of lockdowns. As Dr. Peter McCullough says, bird flu is their next pandemic and they're trying to make us scared about it. Well, do you think that the left could use the bird flu pandemic or something else, like the threat of something similar to rerun the 2020 election? There's no doubt about it. Uh, there will be a factitious of food shortage. It doesn't need to happen. There's going to be an overplayed threat to both human and veterinary health. I can tell you, uh, we haven't had a single death in the United States in a, in a person from bird flu. It's probably been around for over 100 years, as indicated in a review by Lysette and colleagues. The current uh, strain of bird flu is not much of a threat to animals. We don't see large number of migratory water birds dead. We haven't seen large numbers of poultry or cattle that have actually died of the disease. So we need to stop intentionally culling or killing healthy animals, which is being promoted by agriculture directors. We need to stop mass PCR testing of the animals by government officials. That doesn't need to happen. And then in no circumstances should we vaccinate the animals or humans for bird flu. So don't fall for it, is what Dr. Peter McCullough is saying. But that's why they're holding this massive bird flu summit in Washington, D.C., set for early October. Thanks to Cambry for alerting to us on Twitter, by the way. Here's the three-day bird flu summit. And guys, this is not some conspiracy theory, okay? We're going to show you the actual summit website and their actual sessions that they're holding. So this is their website, the International Bird Flu Summit. As I was working on the story, my son said, what is a summit? What, what, why are they holding a bird flu summit? And I said, well, Money. That's, a, that's a great question. They're charging a lot to go to it, by the way. Um, and you can see all the different speakers that are showing up to the bird flu summit. And then I'm going to show you the breakout sessions here. So it's a three-day event where you can go to different uh, events and different breakout sessions. I think they have over 20 different breakout sessions. So let's take a look here on your screen. Uh, preparedness in birds, in cattle, prevention and recovery detection in pets and in people and response in people. So let's go down here and we scroll down on their website. You can all download this if you guys want to and take a look for yourselves. Again, not a conspiracy theory. It's on their website. Here's the first breakout session, mass fatality management planning. (laughs) So we're all going to die. That's positive. How do we handle that? Direct fatality management tactical operations. You know, when all the bodies start piling up, I'm going to go to that breakout session. Activate fatality management operations. Conduct more. I mean, there's not even the word prevention. It's like when that happens. Yes, when it happens. How do we manage it? (laughs) How do we go to the morgue? Continue. Here, I love this. The continuity of government planning. You know, when half the government dies, what do we do about it? Let's go to that session. Strategies for operating with 50% or more absenteeism. So when half the Senate dies, 
half the House of Representatives die. What do we do about it? Let's go to that session or session number three, business continuity planning. How do we handle making sure that businesses don't collapse and ensure uh, safe travel policies, decision making for reducing or closing operations? In, in my favorite, though, of course, is here at the bottom on your screen, implementing remote work policies and flexible schedule. So, yes, remote work, of course remote work policies, and resource allocation for employees and customer protection. Of course, when I see safe travel, you know that means no travel. They don't want you to travel. They don't want you to travel at all, right? They don't want you to get on an airplane or anything. Do you remember Event 201? Remember mm -hmm. we covered that? Like where it was a, yeah. A, yeah. a simulation? Like this is like a, the, a printout, a PDF printout of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, Whereas, look... We've covered bird flu. We've been talking about this for weeks now. And so if actually they had good intentions about making sure that bird flu was safe, well, we know we've talked to several doctors here on the show that said, if you let this play out, then the animal population will kind of adapt to it. And as it stands now, it should not mutate to become transmissible between humans. We should leave it be. We should not, as Dr. McCullough said, be mass culling and mass testing animals in anticipation of this because it indicates to us that that could be a gain of function manipulation right so at well-intentioned summit like this would be what it would be well-intentioned summit like okay we're gonna watch bird flu we're going to what talk about the therapeutics that we currently have such as things we were not allowed to say, right? We're going to talk about, I don't know, management of information, those kind of things. I, I mean, I don't like when the government ever says management of information, but you know what I'm saying. Right. There, there, this seems to me a summit in bad faith. So I decided to give them a call because it turns out on their website, they have a phone number. So the Bird Flu Summit has a has a phone number. And I, I had a lot of questions, you know, I, have, I had a lot of questions for them. So uh, I called them just a short time ago and asked them a few questions. And, and here's how it went. So the Bird Flu Summit has a phone number that you can call and you can ask questions about their agenda and what they plan to do at the Bird Flu Summit in October. So I'm going to give them a call. Call them the Bird Flu Hotline, Bird Flu Summit Hotline. Hi, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hi, I was trying to reach someone um, who is perhaps in media relations or who could talk to me about the Bird Flu Summit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you I can help you with that. Sure. So my name is Clayton. I'm calling from Redacted. Um, we're on a recorded line, if that's okay. I just want to ask you a few questions about the Bird Flu Summit. It's October, right? It's coming up in October? Mm-hmm. Can you tell me why are they holding a bird flu summit when there it's been around for a hundred years, bird flu, uh, there is, there's never been a human case of bird flu that has caused a death. Why are there all of these breakout sessions being held at this bird <laughs> flu summit that are about public control, emergency services, vaccine deployment? Can you talk, can you tell me about that a little bit? All right, so um, this will be our first year of doing the bird flu, and hold on. This is your first year of dealing with the bird flu. Is that what you said? Yeah, this is um, this is our first year doing this conference. Why why are they holding this uh, for the first time? Why do you think right now uh, there is this need to hold the conference right now? Okay, hold on. Why in 2024 are you holding a bird flu summit? Why now? It's been around for a hundred years. Just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. You so, um, I, as you all know that, um, yeah, because according to our research, um, this global transfer allows um, this is to spread. So. Um, According to your research, I'm sorry, what? The global transmission, what? Yeah, so there are certain um, values um, that are here around. 
there are certain viruses that are here and around. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. But what viruses specifically are here and around? You're talking about bird flu specifically? Mm -hmm. Clayton. Okay. <laughs> and so among your breakout sessions are sessions about controlling the population, civil unrest. Is there a concern that Americans or Europeans might become upset or unrestful if in fact they are told to stay in their homes? You have another session that specifically focuses on remote work, so people staying home from work. But what evidence is there that people would need to stay home from work, stay in their homes, or be locked down because of bird flu? Can you explain that? She hung up on me. <laughs> wow. She hung up. I mean... So I guess you're not allowed... <laughs> okay. Oh, I think that is why you don't outsource customer support. <laughs> well, I was, I was yeah, just going to say... Well, like, what I, I'm what just were you supposed to ask and, for? I, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say she was not media relations. So I think she... I think <laughs> sure. <that's... laughs> no, it's, and it's a Virginia phone number. I'm calling Virginia. I mean, it's Northern Virginia. This is where the summit is. And she, you know, this was the call routed to her. You, there's multiple options when you call that phone number. You can talk to multiple people there. So wait, and, let, uh, me, let me just get this straight, what she said. There are viruses. That are out there and that there's a concern around. about ab around bird there's flu now. Around. Around. They, they are. They're here. Well, and uh, and so we need to have breakout doing. sessions. She was like the press secretary. She's like going through that. Oh, book she's like, like, oh my gosh, wait. Crap. Right. She's I can help script. you. Let me look at let me look through my book here real quick. <laughs> you should have just said, wait, I'm about to give you my credit card. Um, I'm going to register. But first, and then maybe she would have found some <laughs> right. information. I'm going to sign up for a breakout session. I'd like to be a speaker. By the way, you can sign up and be a speaker there if you'd like, and you can pay a lot of money to be a speaker, I guess. Hey, can, and, uh, it's like $625 to attend. Can we get a table? Do they have vendors? We have a redacted they table do. At you, you, can be a, <laughs> you can be a vendor. We should have a redacted table at the bird flu summit. Yeah. Come I'm gonna over have, here and, and learn this more. is called real journalists questions about bird <laughs> flu. And I'm just going to have a bullet point and no one's going to stop at our <laughs> booth. But Look, I'll I, have peanut butter cups. I wasn't being a dick. Oh. I was just asking the questions that are on your website. Like, why? Why are you having this summit now, 100 years later after this thing has been around? Why, when all of these medical professionals are telling us that there's no concern at all, there's nothing to worry about, not even among birds. We have to cull and kill all of these cattle. We have to kill all of these birds. We have to lock people down. You're having breakout sessions about literally mass fatalities and deaths. So the chat is I saying, mean, let's all call back. Let's all call too. If you to do, fair, I want to know about it. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, if th that's probably the same way a politician would answer it. Well, you know, there's flus around and viruses. Out there and about are viruses. And, yeah. Yeah there's, yeah, there's stuff that's out there and about. I don't they know. exist. So Dr. Kelly Victory was recently on Redacted. She told us the same thing. We already have had ways to treat this, and there's no cause for concern. The good news is, and the, the reason that people should not be fearful of this, is that we have every reason to believe that we have safe, readily available, effective medications to treat bird flu. We have every indication, for example, that it will be easily treated by hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, just like uh, COVID was easily treatable with hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, and steroids. The problem was the powers that be prohibited us from even talking about those things, let alone having ready access to them. Uh, if doctors were not impeded from treating patients uh, who had COVID with those medications, the death toll and the suffering would have been far less. So hopefully if bird flu should become something to be concerned about, if it should begin to be transmitted between human beings and between people who are not in direct contact with infected animals, then hopefully we will be allowed to use the medications that we should be able to use, like hydroxychloroquine. If instead they shut those things down in order to foist their mRNA vaccine, quote unquote, agenda on us, uh, then it's going to be up to people to push back and say, no, we fell for that the last time and we're not falling for it again. 
Yes. Oh, mRNA vaccine, you say? Is that why the United States is trying to fund the Moderna mRNA bird flu shot? Shocking. Uh, that was reported on May 30th in Forbes, if you want to see it for yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, mRNA is the solution to everything. It's the new tofu, I guess. Well, we have, goes in everything. Tomorrow we'll have uh, Max Jones on the show. We're going to talk to him. He's just <laughs> written a new piece, uh, on, on, excuse me, in Unlimited Hangout. I don't know how you say that. The website is Unlimited Hangout. So he wrote an article in Unlimited Hangout oh, yeah. uh, about about biopharmaceutical complex and the, the move to basically keep us permanently in a state of pandemic preparedness. And that's how these big biopharmaceutical companies right now, this is part of their plan because their plummet, their, their profits are plummeting. Now that we're not in a quote unquote pandemic. So how do you raise their profits? Well, you just create more pandemics and you, you, yeah. you, and that's you get a, and you, and you do to, emergency youth, emergency you use get Stephen Colbert to do a song about it. Like that's going to mm-hmm. be, we can get more of that. Yeah. All these late night hosts doing songs about the bird sure. flu jab.